Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. I'm Keith McKinnon. Before we start, uh, I was going to try to do my Australian accent, but I really stink at that. <laughs> but I just want to put a shout out to our brother down in Western Australia, Tony. Uh, and Tony watches our videos. So believe it or not, we have a viewer in Western Australia that watches our video. So hello, Tony uh, from the land of Ox. With that, we are in the Norwood Masonic Temple, and joining me today is Right Wishful Thomas Michael McClintock, District Deputy for the Seventh Masonic District. Um, Tom, you're a member of what lodge? Orient Lodge. Orient Lodge. There's a couple of lodges. Yes, there's three lodges in the building: Orient Lodge, Lafayette Dover Lodge, and Union Lodge, which is a Paul Revere Lodge. And you're a member, past master, of course, of that lodge. Um, past master of Orient um, Lodge. And, and now you're the current district deputy grand master of the 7th Masonic District. 7th District. Correct. And also a little bit of a building Masonic history geek Just like myself. History buff, correct. Um, I like to say geek, but okay. history buff is fine too if you want to use that. Um, today, Tom is going to talk a little bit about the Norwood Masonic Temple. Uh, guys, if you get a chance to come on down to Norwood, uh, I've been here, I don't know how many times I've been here, probably about five or so times over the years, and I think my first visit was like 30 years ago. Um, it's a great building, I love it. Um, you see in the opening and the closing episode of this, uh, the beautiful um, um, murals that are in the east and they also have one in the west uh it's got some great again staying with the theme local masonic history it's got some great local masonic history of where some of these items came from to build the temple who built the temple um so it's all local correct stuff correct. which is great um tom also has with him the original blueprints of the building which date from 19 1916. 1916. Um, I'm a um, student of uh, architectural drafting. That's what I went to college for. Uh, so I love to look at blueprints. Um, and I understand how to read blueprints. They can be a little bit hard to understand sometimes. But blueprints are rather interesting, especially when it comes to a Masonic building, because when I look at them, I want to find the the, the, the small differences from a blueprint to the actual building. And there is, because as they're building the building, this really doesn't work here, but it works over here. Okay, well, we're not going to change the blueprint. We're just going to move it. I, I see that in my own building in Cambridge, where a one-ton safe was on the other side of the wall, supposedly as they were right. in the blueprint uh, stage. But during the construction period, it got moved to the other side. And you just can't move a one ton safe just because there's a wall. You you have to reinforce the, well, the floor. Yes. So there is some stru structural um, uh, work that has to be done. So um, little things like that that I, I like to pick out. Another great thing too, Tom, that I don't know if you know it's about blueprints. They're, they're really good for the, the large historian, uh, especially a large build, uh, building historian. Um, who wants to dive into about the history of the building like you do and, and talk about it. Um, great thing is they, they, they talk about uh, or they mention well, as they're building uh, and designing the, the rooms, if a room was named after somebody, which a number of our rooms are. Correct. Um, they will have it most of the time on the blueprints. Um, take for Cambridge, Massachusetts. Our main lodge was named after Henry Endicott, a past grandmaster, past master of right. lodge. There's no plaque. They never put a plaque up. Um, so Henry Endicott died in 1913. Of course, the members, you know, this building dates to 1910, our building. Um, everybody's dead. <laughs> so the name of the lodge, the, the room is, is gone. Uh, nobody bothered to look at the blueprints. Nobody bothered to read the old minutes. Um, and there it is, um, that in the blueprints is Endicott Hall. Our small large room is named after Lucius Page, or called Page Hall. So today, there is a, a plaque and also a paint, uh, painted wall that now indicates 
Endicott Hall, and Page Hall. So you get to know what the original rooms were. Um, you know, did your did your building have a ladies' parlor? Did it have a library? Did it have a smoking? Did it have an arm? Did it have you know two large rooms? Did it have three large rooms? Did like my building have a banquet hall and a luncheonette hall? Did it have one kitchen? Did it have two kitchens? Um, another thing we found out that there was a half bath in the kitchen. We never knew it was just a toilet and a sink. That had long been demolished. Never knew that it existed. Um, so little things like that are great when you have the original blueprints because then you can look that up. So you found the half bath on the blueprint? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about the, the, the blueprints and Scott, who is also a member of uh, Orient Lodge, is going to give us the uh, digital uh, copies of these. So we'll, we'll have these on the uh, episode as we are talking. And, and they're about. A very interesting read. So the, the Norwood building, the cornerstone was laid in 1916. Uh, this is the second Masonic building to be in Norwood. The original was at the corner of Washington and Cottage Street, oh. and it was built prior to 1865. And when the lodge was formed in 1865, they bought the building. When the town was formed in 1872, the Masons went to the, the town members and said, you don't have a building. You can use our building if we can meet in the attic. So, so I'm sorry, no, Norwood was it Norwood until 18, what was it before? 1865. Well, oh, they were members of Celestial Lodge and St. Albans Lodge. They formed the lodge in 1865. And what was the town? Oh, it was South Dedham. Oh. South Dedham, oh, yes. I didn't know that. Yes. After the Civil War, a lot, a, a lot of reformation of towns and oh. lodges, et cetera, happened. So it was oh. South Dedham. And what happened was um, July 4th, uh, 1871, uh, the local militia decided to ring the bell. And the constable from Dedham came down and said, you don't ring the bell on July 4th. And they said, why not? Because we don't do that in Dedham. Well, they decided, then we'll form our own town. <laughs> so, so they can ring the bell. It's in February 22nd, 1872, the town was formed. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So so they met, they used our building. And then in eight, uh, 1913, George Ellis, who was a selectman and an, an industrialist at the time, bought all the houses on Washington Street to build a uh, retail district. And uh, so the Masonic building was bought as part of that process. So they laid the cornerstone here in 1916. It was bought, it was built originally to be a Masonic building. Uh, the architect was William Upham, same, same gentleman who designed a lot of the Masonic buildings and a lot of the buildings in Massachusetts. And uh, all of the material came locally as far as the wood is finished here in Norwood. Uh, it has I-beam construction. The I-beams were cast here in Norwood. Wow. Uh, it, had, it never had gas lighting. It was one of the first non-residential buildings to have knob and tube lighting, which we still have some of the original up on the fourth, yes. third floor. Don't touch. And, um, and so the, the trustees have done a great job of maintaining the building. So built in 1916, finished in 1917. If you come in the main door, if you, and this is 1917, so you come in the main door, the men's area is on the left, that would take you up to the lodge room. The ladies' lounge is on the right, there's a ladies' bathroom that was built in, it's in the, in the blueprints, and uh, that's where the ladies would go. If you went straight ahead, there was a second, there is a second lodge room down there. And if you look at the ceiling, you'll notice there, there are four lights on one end, but a center light on the other end, with a switch on it, a, a pull string. Is that the, with a... Billet tables are? Yeah. No, no. The, the room before that. Oh, that room. Yeah. That's it's actually a, a lodge it's room. It's actually a lodge room. Yes. And then you have the recreation room, which all the- Which is in the back. Which is in the back. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you have to go through the lodge room to get- Well, to no. If you were back then, if you were a member, if you were a master of the lodge, you got a key to the front door. If you were a member, you got a key to the back door. So you came through the back door into the recreation room, and they used to use it a lot. They used it a lot. And, yeah. and I'm happy to say it was about five years ago, the younger members of the lodge started renovating uh, the rooms. We, we had the old ladies' lounge, which was Eastern Sound, who had moved out. It had become storage. It had gone into disarray. And a bunch of the younger members were you know, not happy with it. And so we encouraged them to go ahead, make changes, do what you need to. And I went to the, the past masters of the lodge and said, 
do not get on that committee, say nothing until they say it's done. And Scott Davis was part of that group that renovated the room. And while they were doing that, uh, we had gone up to the armory and the armory was all storage. Mm -hmm. And the current commander at the time and I walked in and he said, this is a mess. And I said, I'm a scoutmaster. We'll clean this room out. I remember. Yeah, so we cleaned it out and, and a couple of features. So in the for the building itself, some of the features that you really uh, find interesting, when you approach the building, there were two ionic columns on the front. Just to the outside of those are two square columns. Well, if you look, there's actually vents on the roof. The air would come down those vents, cross the banquet hall, and there was a blower that would come into the lodge room here, blow the cool air from the basement up into the lodge room, and then exhaust out the ceiling. So that's 1916 air conditioning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we had the same thing in Cambridge, but we didn't have blowers. We 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 relied on gravity and suction. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, we actually had a giant blower. It was only wow. taken out recently when we put the mini splits in. So um, you were telling me about the the lighting. As you walk into the building, you come in, you come across a, 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 a long hallway first, which has skylights in it. Skylights in But you're on the first floor, so we're in the... They're not true heck, skylights. Skylights go. There are electric lights behind them, and each of those panels is custom cut. You can't... When I was a brand new member, I thought I would do, be nice and clean some of them. And I get up there and I started moving some and discovered they're each cut for each panel. So you can do one at a time. Otherwise, you won't know where they go back. So what was the reason just for aesthetic light? Yeah, it's just aesthetic light. Yes. Wow. Yes. But if you go through the building, you'll notice there are some true skylights. And the way the stairwell is designed is part of the air conditioning because right. yeah. it's large and open yeah. to allow air, you know, air to come up. Right. And, and then each of the skylights are each of the skylights are perforated. You know, there there's a basically a nursery uh, skylight over it on the roof, but they they're perforated to allow the air out. Wow. So we have we have two in the building, one over the main staircase and one in the armory. The interesting thing of the one in the armory is when we were having the room redone is there's a shade that comes across the skylight. That was put in during World War I so that if somebody was using the room, they would pull the shade over. Therefore, if there's any planes flying over, they wouldn't know the building was in use or wouldn't right. even know the building was there. Which was very popular during World War II You're, with the civil defense. Correct. Lights out. Correct. Would be yelled out. And, so, yeah. so when we had the room re renovated, I told them, you leave that shade wow. alone. That's interesting. So if you guys come to Norwood, go up to the upstairs we'll the you up can see the World War One slash World War Two blackout shade. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Wow. That's interesting. Um, now, I know Scott is going to talk a little bit downstairs in the museum room. Right. Uh, which used to be the ladies' parlor. Correct. Uh, you guys have did a marvelous job putting together a museum room down there. I wish more Masonic buildings would do that. Um, the the main the the second large room now is, is sort of a sitting lounge area. Yeah, it's a lounge. And you area got the now. the billiard room in the back, the game room. Um, your banquet hall is on the basement. Banquet hall has always been in the basement. There's a kitchen off the banquet hall. The extension where the dishwasher is was originally, if you look on the blueprint, was originally a storage room. Hmm. And uh, that has now been, uh, that, got, that all got upgraded in 2002, 2003. Um, you also have an elevator, which a uh, lot of my old Masonic buildings don't have, but. Eight, 1986. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I know uh, we were at um, Newtonville. They also have one. They had one in, in, in Belmont, but that was a newer building. Yeah, they had right. one here. And I think there's a couple other. Um, Adabo, if you guys ever go to Adabo, you want to get the feel of, you know, a 1900 elevator. Uh, they have an old one there. Um, what about the murals? The so the, the murals are interesting, actually. So the murals come in two forms. There's, uh, there's murals and there's frescoes. Frescoes are on fabric, murals are on the wall. The one up here in the west is actually a fresco. Those are murals. Okay. So, so and these are original to the, the building? Those are originals to the building. Now, they have a light in the front or a light in the back? Light in the front. Okay. They actually have blue, red, blue, and white lights. Um, We'll try to get a picture of the one in the west. You all can see the the three here in the east. Um, the scene, I presume, because to the Greeks, therefore, not to the Romans. Correct. Excuse my ritual, but I presume that's what it is. Correct. Correct. 
do you happen to know what the building is? That's... Oh, I don't. You don't? I don't. Okay. It's distantly like the Parthenon, but I don't believe it's the Parthenon. I think it's just a rendition based on the ritual. Because okay. nothing in this room is decorative. Everything is... As a matter of fact, one of the interesting things about the building is, if you walk through the building, the Maltese cross is everywhere. The Maltese cross... Yes. The, the, yeah, the, the altar, the, yeah. The, the Maltese cross is on and the windows. It's behind the, the west. It's at the treasurer's desk, the secretary's desk. Because when Orient Lodge was formed, uh, St. Omar's Commandery also was part of, the original men were part of St. Omar's Commandery. So at one, at one time we had one commandery and eventually four of them, and they, they joined to become what is United Commandery today. Oh. Cool. Um, and lastly, because we, we do have to close, unfortunately, Tom, and yep. we'll move on, but um, this room, like a number of other rooms that I have been in, uh, I, I, New Bedford, uh, Manchester, um, good Lord, I forget now the other one. I, I think maybe Lowell, um, have the stone imagery. Right. Oh. Of, of it being block. Correct. Plaster? Plaster. Ah, plaster that looks like yes, yes. limestone. This, this is amazing because if you go to the, what I call the bones of the building on the fourth floor, you can see the I-beam, you can see the knob and tube, you can see the plaster formations. Wow. And they did a spectacular job. It looks like limestone. Yes. That is used throughout the room. And uh, who would have known 106 years later and it's still in great condition. Yeah, it's in excellent condition. Excellent condition. Um, any other little tidbits that you can tell me about the building? Uh, the marble in the building, there's marble on the floors, it's all original, the, the woodwork is all original. There's one doorway, the doorway between the second lodge room and the recreation room was put in, in during World War II to save on uh, the heating costs. So there is actually a closable door there. The original drawing does not have, it has an archway door, not a closing door. See, again, <laughs> this is where blueprints come in. Uh, thank you very, very much. Um, I'm glad you you actually came up with the idea about the blueprints. Correct. Um, and I'm glad because, you know, a lot of our buildings do have the blueprints. We don't sometimes utilize them. We don't take care of them. Um, and they're a great asset, not only to the lodge and the history, but basically to the building, especially if you're going to do any type of renovations kind of, later on. Well, and the challenge with that is because of the building is where it's from, you cannot go to Home Depot and get parts. So the trustees have been really good about maintenance versus a replacement. Um, so guys, get out there, find your blueprints, take care of them, um, digitize them, which I think Scott, you did, right? Digitize them so this paper will someday cease to exist. It is paper. Um, digitize them. Uh, get them known amongst the others that we have copies, that if people know where the copies are. Um, do some research. Um, they're, they're great for just looking at and saying, wow, this is what my building looked like, or this is what they wanted it to look like. Uh, again, there could be differences that are done. Um, with that, Tom, I can't thank you very, very much. A, a real pleasure. On behalf of the crew. Anybody wants to tour the building, I'm happy to do it. Please come on down to Norwood. It's a great building. I love it here. Uh, with that, uh, don't forget, thumbs up, uh, subscribe. Uh, please follow us on Facebook. Uh, again, we will have pictures of the interior of the building, the rooms, and the blueprints. Uh, if we don't have them on our video, uh, they will be on our Facebook. So please look at our Facebook. Once a new video is posted, uh, once you get done looking at that, go to our Facebook page and see if there's any extra pictures because you never know what we're going to post. So with that, thank you very much.